get started, if you'd like to be signed up for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to know who's next on the ballot, hit the notification bell. Hello, nerdy jurors. My name is Maria Park, and this is Approach the Nerd. So Star Trek plus Star Wars equals Spider-Man? Well, it does according to J.J. Abrams and his son Henry. These two are giving us a new take on our favorite web slinger. So without further ado, here is our review of Spider-Man issue one, Abrams style. So the comic opens with a scene right out of Star Trek and Star Wars, where we see there's debris everywhere and smoke, so pretty much the city has seen better days. And right smack in the middle of all of the debris and destruction is Mary Jane Parker, who has just located her husband, who like the state of the city, also looks like he's seen better days. She's very quick to remind Peter that the rules have now changed, which is the first indicator that we're definitely not dealing with something we're used to on Earth 616. And after making a quick joke about how their son laughs at anything, Peter's spider sense goes off. In the next panel, we get our very first glimpse of Cadaverous, which is actually pretty frightening. Cadaverous and his goons that look like they're from the Alien movie franchise quickly overpower Peter, who's screaming for MJ to run. Unfortunately, it's a little too late and MJ gets impaled. Then we see an enraged Peter manage to break free of his captors as he leaps off the bridge that MJ was just thrown off of to save his wife. But from the amount of blood that we see in the panel and MJ not being a mutant or have any healing factor, it's pretty obvious that she didn't make it. This panel reminds me so much of what happened with Gwen Stacy and how Peter just does not have good luck with women. And then we get to see for the first time Ben Parker, MJ and Peter's kid, at her funeral. And even though we do see Peter is at the funeral and is holding his son's hand, Peter's eyes look completely lifeless. And then we have a time jump of 12 years. We see that little Ben Parker is now a teenager and is pretty responsible doing his chores and even making breakfast before he heads to school. He also stands up to bullies and gets in trouble a lot, which he really doesn't seem to have any remorse about. And then we have a scene between Peter and his son where it's obvious that Peter has not been around a lot. In fact, Ben seemed pretty surprised that he even showed up to school to get him out of trouble. And Peter is also sporting a hook for a hand, so not sure what happened there. And from Ben's reaction to Peter asking him to stop helping people, it's obvious they do not get along very well. And seeing how much Ben reminds Peter possibly of MJ, it does make sense. And even Aunt May is not able to guilt Peter into being a better father, which is pretty sad because she's like 150 years old and she's still raising other people's kids. So when she snaps, Peter is a goner. So by the time Ben reaches home and rips Aunt May's door off the hinges, we as readers understand that he has no idea that daddy used to be Spider-Man, especially after he freaks out waking up on the ceiling with no idea how he got there. And super mom Aunt May, because how could she not be at this point, just walks in and tells him to go to the attic and look through his dad's crap. And after searching a while under pictures and letters between him and his mom, he finally finds it. The legacy Spider-Man suit the suit that will probably one day be his. And I'm certain the one question in his mind is, Dad, you got some spelaining to do. And there you have it, our review on issue one of Spider-Man Abram style. I really did dig this issue. I mean, seeing Peter as the solemn and pretty much given up on life anti-hero now is interesting. And I do think that he does love his son. I actually think that he feels guilty for letting MJ die and not knowing how to face his kid. So that should be interesting to see as the issues progress. But it was definitely cute to see that Ben, like his father, has absolutely no idea how to talk to women. And I really think that Faye Ito is adorable. But don't take my word for it. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think. And until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. And don't forget to check out some of the other videos we have.